Hey, Oeno team. Cheers from Beaver Creek. I'm here with my dad. We're out in the, in the, in the mountains and we wanted to talk to you a little bit about our, 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 about our 2017 uh, allocation. We, we just released these wines and we're here in, in, a friend's, in a friend's house who has become a, a huge collector of us. They've, they've been uh, collectors of Burgundy, uh, Tuscany, Bordeaux, and of course, Napa Valley. And we're just happy to be part of their cellars. And uh, well, we, 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 we love these wines and we, we wanted to talk a little bit more about um, where, where, where all these projects started. Uh, my dad started it eight years ago and it's been quite a journey. And so I'm just gonna let my dad elaborate a little bit on, on how he got started on Cervantes and how we've been um, progressing throughout the, uh, throughout the years, learning the process and just enjoying every single moment of it. Hello everyone, thank you for joining us. Um, I, I, I would like to start by telling you a little bit about the way we, we, we found this property and, and how our, our passion for wine led us to Napa Valley and the Cabernet Sauvignon. So this is a, a, a journey that started for me 20 years ago when I decided or more, when I decided to to find one of the best places in the world to make wine. But uh, at the same time, we love outdoor and the lifestyle that we were looking for. So after a few years, we searched for seven years and, and we found this property, which is in the Eastern far ages of uh, Napa Valley. And uh, we, it's an 1100 acre ranch where we have a lot of wildlife. The ranch is uh, between very big properties and uh, preserves, so there's uh, still uh, a lot of wildlife. Black tail bears, like the name of our wine, and bears. And we, when we first bought it, there was a hillside vineyard planted in 1999, where these grapes come from, and. Uh, and after a few years, uh, we met, well, since the beginning, we met Andy Erickson and then with Andy, we started to develop new vineyards and trying to learn about our, our terroir and how we would develop these wines. So it's, it's a very, it's, I, I want to talk a little bit about the place, right? Uh, my dad elaborated earlier that we're in the far east and yeah, in, in the far northeast of the valley, which is called uh, Pope Valley. And we we love the nickname. So it's uh, Napa, it's considered Napa Valley's last frontier. And it's been a, it's been a journey because uh, it, it was never, uh, it hasn't been considered an ABA yet, but um, it'll uh, it, like Preacher Hill and uh, we're just past Preacher Hill, past Howl Mountain, and it's a very interesting terroir. Uh, we have a microclimate there. Uh, we have warmer, uh, warmer days and colder nights, and it's, it's like my dad said, it's just very rugged, and it's, it's like Napa used to be maybe 40, 50 years ago, and like you barely see a winery, it's just open space, uh, the wildlife, it's just outstanding. It's just beautiful to just walk through the vineyards and all of a sudden you you see uh, black-tailed deer, turkeys, uh, wild boars, and it's it's just filled with, with a different energy. Let me elaborate a little bit about the vineyards. The vineyards, uh, we started to learn, they were planted before we arrived, some of them, and then we start planting more and more. We learn about the fortitude and the strength of the vineyards and what it's beautiful about this vintage, this 2017 vintage, is that the first time that we had the opportunity to play with all the grapes from the property, uh, the ones that we also planted, uh, uh, because at the beginning we only have uh, very few uh, 
five thousand. We have Cabernet Sauvignon and Sauvignon Blanc that we don't develop. But uh, uh, after a few years, we analyze the terroir and we start planting Cabernet Franc, Malbec, Mer uh, Merlot, uh, Petit uh, uh, Syrah, Petit Verdot, and Tempranillo. Tempranillo too. And and Andy has been very creative, and he always thought that the best wine of the property was going to be a blend. And we're still working on it, but it's just amazing how this land has given us uh, a huge, huge uh, opportunity to 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 work with it and 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 try to improve uh, the different different uh, varietals that we have. Yeah, we're we're like not done. Much. We're not done planting, right? I mean, we're we'll probably experience with other varietals, so. That's always very interesting as a, as a producer and as a winemaker. It's just being able to experiment and, and see it, the, the, the sky is the limit. I mean, it's just imagination and how we can um, really uh, discover how to make the best wines of our terroir. So uh, that, that brought us, let's, <clears throat> let's, talk, talk, let's stop talking about ourselves and a little bit more about the wines. Why don't you start talking well, well, how, how Blacktail came yeah, along? We, we, for the first uh, couple of vintages, we only did the Cabernet Sauvignon that obviously was the, the lead varietal that led us to, to Napa Valley. And, and uh, we started to play with a, with a blend. And uh, what is amazing, and Andy Erickson accomplished that, was that, that actually this wine goes shoulder to shoulder with the Cabernet Sauvignon and has had a beautiful uh, reviews, but it's very important to let you know that, uh, well, Andy's gonna talk about that. In, yeah, in, in a few in moments, few Andy wines. will elaborate. He is gonna elaborate in both wines, but just the fun of, of being able to share our land through our wines, it's, it's, it's has brought a lot of people to the table and we just love the ride. And I mean, it's, a, the black tail, uh, it's just simply delicious, and it's 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 a new taste of Napa Valley for sure. And it's it's varietal that is predominant is the Malbec. So of course Napa is known for uh, their Cabernet Sauvignon, but I mean people are just realizing that there's a whole bunch of different varietals that really strive on our terroir. So just seeing this. Uh, new release and new taste is just very impressive and I'm super pleased with the product and um, uh, Andy will of course elaborate a little bit more on that so why why don't we let him yeah <laughs> hi everyone this is Andy Erickson and I'm here at our Favia winery down in Coombsville in the southeast corner of Napa Valley and just well first of all I just want to thank Javier and Geronimo for including me in this this video and um, very excited about presenting the wines from 2017 from Cervantes and it's been a really fun project to work on with these guys I mean I've been working with uh, Javier since 2014 um, since he first decided to start making wine and it's pretty fun people ask me how I how I met Javier and how we started working together. And basically we have, we have some friends in common in Napa Valley and, and over the years I would meet Javier and we'd see each other at, at parties and dinners and stuff. And Javier would say, Andy, someday you're gonna make my wine. And I thought, okay, that sounds great. And uh, it was years later that Javier came to me and said, hey, I bought, I bought my ranch. And so we drove out uh, to Pope Valley and this is in a beautiful secluded part of Napa Valley and we drove out there and I just remember thinking, oh my God, this is, this is incredible. It's like the wild west out there. I mean, you know, ex expansive ranches, mountains. And so I just fell in love with the property and we started working right away on, on what we would do together. And, and there's a planting, um, more than 20 years ago, this north facing hillside was planted. And so this is a vineyard that's just, you know, hit its stride and is producing really nice Cabernet Sauvignon. So we started with that and that was the first wine we made. We made Cabernet Sauvignon 
um, from those vineyards. And, um, and then later on, I convinced Javier that, you know, Pope Valley is different from other parts of Napa Valley, and we should be exploring some of the other varieties that might do really well. So we're going to get to that, that wine in a moment. But first of all, um, the Cervantes Cabernet Sauvignon from 2017. So this is, um, this is 14, 15, 16, this is the fourth wine we made together. So we, we started making wine in 2014. We did not release that wine, um, but our first vintage was 15. Um, but 2017 for me, is, it's a special vintage um, at Cervantes. Um, we had in other parts of the valley some, some issues with uh, fire that year, but, but we were in a different part of the world out there. And for me, the, the, the vineyard just performed really well. Um, the fruit ripened beautifully. I feel like the wine itself, it has a really nice, a really nice brightness, a really nice purity. Um, we love, and by we, I mean Javier, myself, um, the Cervantes family, we love wines from, uh, from France and from Europe and wines that have great balance. So we're really going for really a combination of California and uh, more of sort of a European bent. So very aromatic, very pure expression of Cabernet Sauvignon, but not really big or overly extracted, so well-balanced. And that's what we're hoping for, for, for this 17. So a little bit of Cabernet Franc blended in, Malbec from the property as well. Aged for about 20 months in barrel, unfiltered, unfined. For me, I just love the, the black fruit quality, the, the intensity, the concentration, but also the balance and the length, and I feel like the wine's gonna age for a long time. So that's the Cabernet Sauvignon. And then in 2017, this is the first year, it was also the first year that we had control over the whole vineyard. So when Javier bought the property, the vineyard was under contract to other wineries buying the grapes. And so in 17, we were finally able to start playing around with um, other varieties on the property. So Malbec, Petit Syrah, Petit Verdot, we planted some Tempranillo on the property and we have the Cabernet Sauvignon. And so my thought was, you know, this, this ranch, this property is so unlike what most people expect when they come to Napa Valley. And, and also, you know, the weather and the, the temperatures out in Pope Valley are very different from, from what we see in the main part of the valley. So why not create something that's very unique, something that only we can do out there. And so that's how we came up with the Blacktail. So this is a blend of Cabernet Sauvignon, yes, but also the Malbec, the Petit Syrah, Petit Verdot, uh, Cabernet Franc still in the wine and exploring with the Tempranillo. So similar winemaking techniques, but I think each of the varieties fits together and creates a really unique, really interesting wine. To me, just lots of perfume, even like some floral characters, but with those raspberry, blackberry notes, um, the real deep fruit character that we get from out there. So this is, <clears throat> this is the same barrel regime as the Cabernet Sauvignon, about 20 months in French oak, unfiltered, unfined. But I feel like it just has a very unique, very interesting palate expression, and that's gonna be fun for us going forward. I mean, this is the wine where we're gonna be trying new things, we're gonna be planting different varieties, we're gonna be creating a wine that's just completely unique and different from what everyone else in the valley is doing. So again, thank you, Javier, and thank you, Geronimo, for including me. I'm gonna turn it back over to you, but um, it's so much fun working with you guys and being part of this project, and I love the ranch. So hopefully we'll see everybody out there soon. Cheers. I'm happy you, you, you met Andy, and he elaborated on, on our wines. Uh, we've been... Uh, each harvest has been very special in many ways and, and 2017 taught us a lot of uh, good lessons. We, we had a, a rough time with the, with the fires, but in our area where we, where, where we live, uh, the, the weather was very, very kind and we had a marvelous, marvelous harvest season uh, with a lot of uh, 
mild weather and that helped us uh, and, 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 and let the, the grapes uh, mature and, and uh, ripen well. And, and it was so special for us because it was the first time that we were able to, to make wine of all these different varietals. Uh, like they, they told you about a lot of Malbec that is growing beautiful in the ranch in uh, also the, the, the Petit Syrah is amazing and Tempranillo. So this vintage was very, very special for us because it allowed us to play on, on all, all the vineyards that we have now. And each year has been incredibly uh, amazing and the learning process of the terroirs has been really, really good. Um, I'm sure uh, everybody's gonna be surprised by the Blacktail, don't you think? The Blacktail has become uh, a very, very likable wine and and, uh, and I think it's due to that richness now that we can play with all these uh, different grapes. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I think it's it's just simply delicious. The the wine is very approachable and it's very smooth across the palate and it's always fun to to taste different varietals, especially from one region and one region that is really really renowned from for their cabernet. So uh, uh, this new taste, this new kid on the block, it's just uh, personally my wife and I'll loves it and i think it's one of my favorite wines for sure so i'm 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 glad you you guys are gonna taste them or you're tasting them as we speak and uh, cheers to all of you as my dad said 2017 was a very hard season but at the same time a uh, family uh, friends uh, talked to uh, kept us together and uh, it's just it's it's about the journey so cheers to all of you we hope you enjoy the wine and we hope we'll we'll, we'll, we'll send over the 2018s next year so you can taste them and I think uh, it's it's important we can't wait to visit you guys hope uh, this uh, process that we are doing together uh, passes by and everybody is happy and healthy we wish you all the best uh, we miss you and hope to be together again soon because there's nothing better than sharing a table and all this work that we're doing is to share. So thank you so much for the opportunity and the privilege to be with you guys and uh, we wish you the best. Salud. Cheers.